Hello and welcome to our webinar, Innovating the Future, CVD Coding Solutions for Semiconductor Device Manufacturing. Thank you very much for joining us, so let's get started. First, an overview, we'll talk about the semiconductor industry from Silcotech's perspective, um, problems in device manufacturing today and problems that may come down the line soon, as well as Silcotech's coding as a solution uh, for the various needs of the industry. So from our perspective, the semiconductor industry obviously is a, a very rapidly evolving um, industry. So we're always driving to smaller nodes, and th this forces the industry to embrace alternative technologies. Uh, these smaller nodes have led to increased importance of no contaminations, whether that's particulate or ionic. Uh, high costs have changed to dynamic and open the door uh, to alternatives. So costs are certainly driving differentiation within the market. And new pathways are being created. New technologies are addressing new needs uh, and very specific needs. So we're going to talk about where Silcotex coatings um, fit in as a solution. So amongst the many challenges in manufacturing that are driven by these demands of the industry, um, there are four primary problems that our coatings uh, will solve. And those are corrosion, ion contamination, uh, specifically from various metals, uh, erosion within the chamber, which leads to particulate and more ion contamination, and carryover effect um, and absorption within the chamber, which, which could bring problems from, uh, from next, the, the following cycles of, of the process. So all of Silcotex coding solutions are amorphous silicon based, so they're very non-reactive barrier. They prevent ions from leaching out of the substrate by actually creating a physical barrier between the process and the substrate without obstructing the manufacturing process whatsoever. Uh, being silicon, they're very hydrophobic relative to an uncoated bare stainless steel substrate, for example and they resist corrosion and erosion very well, which um, will prevent particulate from building up and contaminating the process stream. We have two coatings that are focused towards the semiconductor industry. The first is a new one for us. It is called Dursox, and it is a silicon oxide variation of our Dursan coating. So the, the major points to take away from this one is that it prevents carryover and sticking um, with a very low surface energy. So in the same right, it also resists erosion and corrosion very well and can be considered an upgrade for ceramics as it is very semi-ceramic in nature as an SIO. We also offer silk alloy, which is simply a multi-layer barrier of amorphous silicon. It is excellent for acidic corrosion and and, and re, uh, resist the oxides very well. So it won't be corrosive in, in acids or some of the other common media that are used in um, semiconductor manufacturing or um, cleaning uh, processes between manufacturing steps. So as a chemical vapor deposition layer, um, there are some advantages that come from that process. First, the deposition is extremely thin. Almost all of the coatings that we uh, apply are less than a micron thick. So you have that, that solid barrier between the substrate and the process, but one that doesn't alter the dimensions of the parts or, or forces a, a redesign once parts are coated. Uh, the, the coating is at the molecular level, so it's actually physically bonded to the base substrate which creates a, essentially a new surface. So it's a three-dimensional coating that all exposed faces will see. And again, the coating is very strongly adhered to, to the base substrate below. So in addition to the actual deposition of the coating um, here at Silcotech, we do offer various steps um, that are designed to meet the needs of specific applications. So surface preparation, we, we do a custom surface preparation based on the metallurgy of the base substrate that we'll be coating. 
And this is extremely important to a high quality deposition later on. Um, even you know, fingerprints and greases will highlight other defects in both the coating and the substrate. So it's extremely important to have a very clean, um, bare, stainless, or whatever the material may be, surface going into the CVD process. Also, multiple inspection points throughout, um, we're inspecting parts once they come in the door to ensure that no damage occurred in transit. We're inspecting parts both before and after surface preparation to ensure that the, you know, the base metal or ceramic is, is ready for the coating and will take it well. Um, we also offer, offer character, characterization support uh, through our R&D team here to ensure that um, the substrate is optimum for, for the, the process and ensure that the coating was deposited uh, as required. And of course, it's extremely important um, that we are ISO certified and regularly audited and in compliance there. So there are processes both at the front end of the line and back end of the line in semiconductor manufacturing that will benefit from the uh, contamination prevention and corrosion resistance of the Dursox and silkoid coatings. So on the front end of the line, we have our deposition process, processes such as atomic layer deposition, of course, chemical vapor deposition, epitaxy, and metal organic CVD, um, and then as, as well as the dielectric etch process. And then later on down the line, um, chemical mechanical planarization, CMP, and conductor etch processes, um, which, you know, CMP slurries can cause particulate and corrosion, and etch gases are also very corrosive. These, these processes benefit significantly with parts that are coated um, by Silcotech, and we will talk about why shortly. So first, a very common problem with the industry is the leaching of metal ions from the substrates used um, in semicon semiconductor device manufacturing equipment. So of course, in stainless steel, for example, you have iron and chrome, which are very common, um, but can cause serious problems with a device that needs to be conducting. So iron ions and chrome and other ions are released into the process stream, and iron, in fact, creates deep levels within the band gap causing variable device performance across the wafer. So a lot of problems coming from the materials that um, many companies are using to, to fabricate these devices. And passivation may not be good enough as, as nodes continue to get smaller and uh, technology demand continues to increase. So to solve metal ion leaching, you could use either Dursox or Silkaloid. Both are Again, amorphous silicon coatings that create a barrier between the process and the substrate. Uh, SIO, which is the Dursox, or simply SI silicon, uh, the silk alloy coating are, are non-reactive naturally with the process gases that are commonly used, even for gases that are used to etch uh, silicon oxide or silicon coatings themselves. And of course, the molecular bond of the CVD process limits the possibility, greatly limits the possibility of generating particulate um, that would then be introduced to the process stream and cause problems later on. So here you can see a ion beam image of a um, cutaway that we have here. And you can see in the blown up image on the right, um, that dark layer is the, is the solid barrier between the substrate, which is on the bottom, and of course, uh, the, uh, the air on top. So you can even see at this level of magnification the, that in the bare substrate there are defects. Uh, you can see the two um, cracks or, or defects in, in the stainless steel. The layer on top of that steel is the coating. And you can see that there is a, in this case, a roughly 180 to 190 nanometer barrier um, between the environment and the substrate. So it's very clear that the coating is uniform and complete uh, across the steel surface. We've mentioned adhesion up to this point. So you, of course, with a CVD coating, you'll get extre extremely improved adhesion over a common alternative 
like a, a paint or a spray coating. Um, and those are really disadvantages of those processes. Uh, with this data, you can actually see that in the lower image, we couldn't even get the epoxy used for the adhesive strength test to adhere to what is our Dursan coating, uh, a functionalized version of Dursox, uh, because of its low surface energy um, and its anti-stiction properties. And then just to show, again, the fact that metals and ions from the metals are not leaching out of the bare substrate into the process stream, uh, you can see this XPS data from, um, from the cutaway that we showed before. So what you're seeing is only the elements of the coating. There are no um, iron, chrome, or nickel detected whatsoever in the uh, top 10 nanometers of the surface. Another very common problem that we deal with, not only in semiconductor applications, uh, but all of the applications that, we, that we're involved with here at Silcotech is corrosion. So HCO, HBR, all kinds of corrosives that will degrade even a passive steel um, through interactions within the process stream. So of course corrosion will lead to particulate generation. It'll cause the substrate to degrade and flake into the process. And those ions will get in there and harm the yields of, of, of the process later on down the line. And not to mention that these systems, when this happens, this, this leads to replacement, maintenance cycles, um, very costly implications of corrosion and the degradation of the equipment. So very high cost of ownership and system downtime, which over time that's becoming um, an even bigger issue than it was in the past. So again, both our Dursox and Silk Alloy coatings will work well for resisting um, most of the acids and, and different sorts of corrosive media that are present in a semiconductor manufacturing process. Um, even outside of a plasma environment, many of the process gases are, are non-reactive. Um, you'll see that the Dursox and, and our Dursan coating are both is resistant to both oxidizing and reducing agents. And they're, they're upgrades to stainless, upgrades for stainless steel compared to super alloys. So you'll get a similar performance um, that you would with the corrosion resistance of a super alloy at a much, much cheaper cost with the coating on stainless steel. Uh, not to mention that with the exotic alloys like Hastelloy, Monel, et cetera, you have um, issues such as copper and nickel content, which even though they are great alloys, they still present problems for device manufacturing. So just to show you um, briefly some of the corrosion resistant properties of the coatings, um, in this one we've, we've selected silk alloy and Dursan to, to compare to 316L. And we're doing basic immersion testing that we, that we performed here at Silcotech under the ASTM G31 guidelines. Uh, 24 hours at room temperature, you'll see on the left, six molar HCl. Um, the, the line at 10 mils per year is what the National Association of Corrosion Engineers here in the United States, NACE, has set for a severe corrosion guideline. So you can see that um, in that HCl solution, the bare substrate is attacked quite viciously. Um, and with both the Sokoloy and the Dursan, you're getting a, a much lower um, corrosion rate that is, is very well within the guidelines established as quote unquote severe corrosion. On the right, you'll see that we did the same test with bleach. And you may be wondering, now bleach, is, that's an odd media to, to evaluate. But with the presence of the oxides in the HCl and bleach, um, it can actually simulate the introduction of moisture into a semiconductor manufacturing process. So we thought it would be important to look at. So we did this one uh, in 15% bleach and 72 hours of room temperature exposure. And you can see that even the silk alloy coating that we offer um, gets close to the moderate corrosion level. Um, it's still within, but it is close to uh, moderate corrosion, but the, the Dursan coating is significantly, significantly improved. 
uh, due to its material characteristics. And these are similar uh, to what you would receive with a Dursox coating. So you can expect similar corrosion performance, uh, at least with bleach. And here we're just, we are working to, sh to adapt the data to leaching simulations using, using um, SIMS or XPS. But again, we wanted to show here that you see the coating residing uh, over the binding energy for silica. And again, that there are no, there's no presence of, of other metal ions. You're simply getting the silicon oxide ceramic-like coating with the Durasox. Another problem that's very common and one that we're very familiar with uh, solving is reactivity within the chamber. So a stainless steel surface alone can be a catalyst for various interactions which will cause absorption within the parts. So these interactions cause carryover between experiments, between different maintenance cycles, between different processes, and this will change the expected outcomes. It will impact your yields. And from a vacuum standpoint, moisture and reactivity can, can lead to pump down times that are extremely long. So we'll, we'll show you some data here and to, to show how the coatings prevent that reaction um, and, and allow pump down times to be drastically reduced. Again, both the Dursox and Sokoloid coatings will work, as will the other ones we offer. Um, we can tailor these coatings to, to be inert, you know, non-reactive, um, more corrosion resistant, more, hy more hydrophobic, um, all based on the application that you need. So we originally actually developed this technology, our, our silicon technology that is hydrogenated and functionalized for um, explosives detection applications and gas chromatography. So the scientists needed a way to see, even to the part per trillion level, um, certain analytes within, within the matrix that they were analyzing. And with a bare stainless steel substrate, which is extremely common for many instruments, um, you know, from the injector site through the fittings and valves and tubing, um, those are all sites for important molecules to stick. And they found that with the coating, those molecules completely traveled to the detector and there was almost no absorption whatsoever and they get very, very high response compared to an untreated uh, surface. So this obviously has implications that are important when you're talking about a uh, chamber or other, um, other process components in a semiconductor device manufacturing application. Moisture is extremely important and can be um, extremely detrimental to any process, such as the ones that I've just men mentioned. So you can see in this graph that on the left is our Sokoloid coating, which is, again, simply a layer of amorphous silicon. Uh, if anything, this is a hydrophilic surface with a, only a 49 degree contact angle. As we move up the graph to the right, we reach our silk inert coating at 101 degrees with you know, increasing hydrophobicity. Um, but as we move to the Dursan, which again, very similar to the Dursox coating, we see even better hydrophobicity, and we also have ability to play with the surface a little bit and uh, apply fluorinated molecules to the silicon layer, which allows us to approach uh, what some would deem super hydrophobicity. And in this graph, you can see um, uh, hydrophobicity at a contact angle of 163 degrees. Moving over to pump down times. There are uh, lots of issues with stainless steel vacuum chambers, even though that is the um, substrate of choice for these sorts of components. So that you can see um, the pink dots represent the evacuation rate for an untreated stainless steel chamber. So that you, you can see to get to 10 times 10 to the minus 7 tor, with an uncoated stainless steel chamber, it takes upwards of an hour and a half or even longer to achieve that rate. 
in the blue, the blue triangles, you see simply an amorphous silicon coated chamber uh, coated with our uh, silk alloy coating. And you can see that the same pump down uh, rate, the same, I'm sorry, the same pressure is achieved in 30 minutes or less with the coated substrate. So this just re results in much less outgassing, very low moisture absorption, and overall a lot faster pump downs, um, much more efficient, much more friendly to a production environment than a bare substrate. The last problem we're going to cover, which is uh, common with semiconductor device manufacturing applications, is erosion. Not corrosion, but erosion. So the current solutions that um, are used to prevent slurries and different sorts of process media from harming substrates are our line of sight processes. So thermal spray coatings are very common, and they could work on some more complicated geometries, but they're not uniform whatsoever when you have parts with high aspect ratios. Uh, and this is a, a, a adhesion or a bond that is mechanical with spray. So it's still strong, but it's not molecularly bonded. You can't flex it. You can't flake it. Or I'm sorry, it will flake if you flex. Uh, you can't bend it. It's not easy to be installed. Um, so film stress at a high thickness really needs to be controlled. So there are a lot of issues, not even with the coating substrate, the, the coating surface itself, but the actual coating method uh, that can lead to erosion and eventually contamination um, in the process stream down the line. Our Dursox coating is the one that we offer that will mitigate the erosion issues. So the, the, the layer is a silicon oxide plus some embedded carbon, which adds a ceramic-like strength. So it has a lot of benefit in, in wear applications and, and erosive applications. Of course, the the nature of the CVD process being a three-dimensional coating under vacuum allows the surface to be completely and uniformly covered even with high aspect ratios. So you have yttria and other ceramics common as solutions with semiconductor. They rely on line of sight or other complicated deposition methods um, and, and special fixturing to even get a uniform and conformal layer on the substrate. Aluminum, another common solution, it's a very difficult surface to control. So with the coatings, you actually have the opportunity to have a very reproducible, very repeatable deposition process that will lead in an extremely thin coating that you can, that you can bend and flex with parts as needed. So for example, shower head components are easily coated, bellows, um, and, and the coating will not suffer as those parts move as required by the application. So just to give you a little peek into the erosion resistance of the Dursox coating, um, we actually did a pin on disc, which is the G133 from the ASTM method, the pin on disc study of both our Dursan, again, similar to Dursox, and silk alloy coatings um, on number eight mirror finish 304 stainless coupons. And you can see from the results that the Dursan coating actually had about half, less than half, the wear rate of the uncoated stainless steel. It's important to point out that this test is extremely dependent on the substrate. So even a small defect in the, the stainless steel itself will accelerate the failure of, of the of the coupon in testing. Uh, so take the test results with a grain of salt, but it, it is certainly showing the, the wear resistance of the Dursan and Dursox coatings, which is important um, for some of the more abrasive or aggressive applications within semiconductor device manufacturing. So to summarize, silk attack coatings can reduce system contamination and will reduce system contamination by preventing reactions between process media and the substrate of the components that make up the, the system. So 
eliminating corrosion, eliminating chemical absorption and reactivity, and preventing the ions from the metal substrate below to leach in and cause failures is exactly what these coatings are designed to do. We're able to tailor the surface based on the needs of your application, whether that be a non-reactive barrier or simply an amorphous silicon layer um, that, need, that is corrosion resistant and needs to last a long time. We have the capabilities to tailor the, to the, the coating to your needs. And by doing so, by coating these components, you will see a positive relationship um, on equipment uptime and higher yields and requiring less maintenance of the coatings. I'm sorry, of the components that, that have the coatings. And, and they are a great replacement for costly super alloys and uh, ceramics, which are common alternatives to stainless steel. Thank you very much for attending the webinar. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, we're always available on, the, on our website, www.silcotech.com. Go there for application notes, white papers, video demonstrations, and much more. You can always email our service group at silcode, S-I-L-C-O-D, at silcotech.com, or call us anytime at plus one. 814-353-1778. Thank you very much for attending.